Emergency Preparedness in British Columbia. Five steps everyone needs to know. Supported by the Maple Ridge, Pitt Meadows, Catesy, Seniors Network, the City of Pitt Meadows, Government of Canada. British Columbia is known worldwide for its beauty. But as with any region, its unique location and topography come with risks. Awareness and preparedness for these risks will increase every resident's safety, security, and peace of mind. And especially those with special circumstances requiring extra steps, such as oxygen dependency, medication, or home support. In this video, we'll explain the five things you need to know for emergency preparedness. The risks in British Columbia, how to prepare your emergency kit, how to make an emergency plan, which documents to ready, and conversations you should have with your medical services provider. Feel free to pause the video at any time to complete the steps in each module before moving to the next. Step 1. Know the risks. Risks in British Columbia include floods, wildfires, extreme weather, pandemics, transport accidents, explosions or emissions, terrorism, earthquakes, and tsunami. Let's look at each one a bit closer. Floods. Floods are one of the most common emergencies that occur across British Columbia, caused most often by snowmelt and high levels of local river waters, like the Lower Mainland, for example, and communities around the Fraser River. Floods can occur quickly and can have disastrous results. Just two feet of water can carry away most vehicles. And after the Chilliwack flood in January 2009, many residents were unable to return to their homes for nearly one year. Wildfires. Wildfires are a growing threat in the summer months in British Columbia. Recent years have seen the highest number of fires in the province since 2009, according to data from the Government of Canada. Extreme weather. As part of our natural weather system, extreme weather is a common risk. Extreme weather can cause power outages, which could leave residents in the dark and isolated for days. Medical devices, oxygen machines, and other necessities that require electricity won't be available without a backup source of power. Pandemics. Pandemics like H1N1 can occur at any time, and seniors have a higher risk of serious complications from a virus compared to the general population. transport accidents or hazardous spills. Minor traffic accidents are a daily occurrence. But large transport accidents involving trucks or trains, especially ones carrying hazardous material, can cause road closures, injury, and serious health risks. Explosions and emissions. Explosion and emission risks exist as the result of certain industrial processes. Accidents could emit hazardous materials into the air, water, or land. Terrorism. The risk of domestic or global terrorism is present and difficult to predict in a rapidly changing world. Individuals acting alone or as part of an organization could target major cities. Earthquakes. Earthquakes are a high risk in the Lower Mainland. Coastal BC is located near two major plates that, according to scientists, are a hotspot for a potentially large earthquake. Infrastructure collapse or bridge closures could occur during an earthquake, blocking roadways and delaying access to food, medical services, and more. Tsunamis. Tsunamis are often the result of earthquakes and could cause devastation along the coast of BC. So not to be alarming, or maybe just a little bit, but those are the risks we face in British Columbia. Floods, wildfire, extreme weather, pandemic, transport accidents, explosions and emissions, 
terrorism, earthquakes, tsunami. With the risks covered, consider these possibilities for any short or extended period of time. No water, no heat, no electricity, no phone, no internet, no access to supplies. And these for any special needs. No medication, limited or no oxygen support, no home support. Scary to think about. So being proactive in your preparedness is critical so you can be prepared, not scared. Be proactive. The good news is that to help you be proactive, we have four more steps to cover everything you need to do to prepare. Let's move on to the second step. Step 2. Prepare a kit. To start preparing your kit, use the checklist in our Emergency Preparedness Guide or you can download the guide online. An emergency kit is a container of basic supplies that will help you be as self-sufficient as possible if you're cut off from heat, power, or other necessities. For your kit, you'll need to consider or include these items. A container, food and water, personal items, medication, pet supplies, and important documents. You can find a checklist in our Emergency Preparedness Guide which we'll cover in the next module. Let's start with the first one, a container. Your container can be a bag or luggage with wheels. Make sure your container is waterproof, portable, accessible, and large enough to carry seven days of supplies per person in your home. Now that's a great emergency container. Food and water. When choosing food and water for your container, keep these tips from Linda in mind. Food should be non-perishable. I like to pack canned goods and dried fruit. And don't forget protein, like soup or canned meat or nuts. And at the start of each year, be sure to check the expiry dates and make sure you replace the ones that are expired. And don't forget a can opener. Manual is best. Make sure you pack enough water. I like to pack four liters a day per person, but you might want to pack a few extra liters for bathing or cleaning dishes. If you follow these, Linda's tips, you'll be set for food and water. Personal items. Next to consider are personal items. Including personal items is important for your comfort and safety. Gather everything you need to get through the day, whether it's a clean shirt or a book to read. If the power goes out, a flashlight will be your best friend. Make sure you pack one and don't forget extra batteries. And to keep track of local news, you'll need a radio. It can be a battery-powered radio, a wind-up radio, or a solar radio. And again, don't forget to pack extra batteries. And don't forget your cell phone. And make sure you have a backup battery or charger. And make sure your contact list is up to date including important numbers, like your doctor. And to be on the safe side, just pack a few extra batteries. I like to include toiletries and personal items, like toilet paper, a change of clothes and shoes, a whistle, a poncho, an emergency blanket, hand warmers, an empty plastic bag, some paper towel, and don't forget some money. Make sure you have a first aid kit and make sure your kit is complete with some alcohol wipes, some tweezers, tape, 
some gauze, a cold pack, and other items you'll need. Medication. One of the most important things to include in your kit is your medication. You may not be able to purchase it during an emergency. Ask your doctor for extra medication for your emergency kit. And once a year, don't forget to check the label for the expiry date and replace any medications that have expired. And if your medication needs to be kept cool, make sure you pack an insulated bag. You can always use the cold compress from your first aid kit to keep things cool, especially if you're not near your refrigerator or you've lost power. Pet supplies. But of course, you may need to consider your furry family members. I have a cat, Mittens, so I like to pack an emergency kit for her. In the kit, always pack at least a week's worth of food and some water and a bowl, any medication, her leash and a collar, and don't forget any important documents like vaccination records. You might also want to pack some toys and a blanket. And you might consider buying a travel case in case you find yourself outside. Now what you need after a kit is a plan. Step three, make a plan. Making an emergency plan will help ensure that you feel prepared, not scared. Our emergency preparedness guide can assist you. Answer the questions in the guide. Your answers will act as your step-by-step -step emergency plan. Your plan will need to consider general preparedness, your unique health needs, and your support network. general preparedness. But first, a couple of general tips that are applicable to all emergencies. Know where the entrances and exits in your building or home are. Plan alternate routes in case the roads are affected by the emergency. Secure heavy or important items in your home to prevent them from falling during an earthquake or being washed away in a tsunami. Report any emergency to BC Hydro with the number on the screen. Notify them of any downed power lines. Call 1-800-224-9376 or 49376 on your mobile. Listen to the news for updates from local authorities. Prepare to evacuate. Some emergencies might require evacuation and you may have as little as 15 minutes notice. Stay home until safe. Other emergencies might require staying inside your house. Wait until advised by city officials that it's safe to leave. In case telephone lines and cell phone service are down, pay phones are a tried and true option for getting in contact with family members. If a flood occurs, avoid downed power lines. Only drink tap water after an authority has deemed the water safe to consume. If you lose power, have backup power or a generator for your essential medical equipment, as well as extra fuel, flashlights with extra batteries, and warm blankets on hand. Find a safe place. If a tsunami occurs, you'll need to find a safe area at least 100 feet above sea level or 3.5 kilometers away from the water. There are some preparations to make for earthquakes. Secure your hot water tank to the studs in your walls to prevent it from falling over. Ensure a secure foundation. Talk to your contractor or building manager to make sure your building or home is secured to the foundation. Identify a safe place in each room of the house where you can drop, cover and hold. Stay away from glass, windows, lighting fixtures and smaller and lighter furniture that could cause injury. When possible, 
use bedding or blankets for extra cover. If you're outside when an earthquake occurs, move away from buildings and falling or flying objects as much as possible. If you're driving, pull over and stop when it's safe. Get off bridges or overpasses as quickly and safely as possible. Wherever you are when an earthquake occurs, hold and wait for at least one minute after the shaking stops before moving in case there are aftershocks. Your unique health needs. Did you know that half of the population of Metro Vancouver requires extra assistance in the areas of mobility, hearing, vision, or medical support? If you need extra assistance, make a detailed list of your unique needs. Let's review a few of them with Linda. Mobility. For motorized scooters or electric wheelchairs, keep an extra battery, tire patch kit, and a pair of gloves on hand. If you have a manual wheelchair, you may wish to get a second one and keep it with your emergency kit. And if you use a walker, think about buying a second one and also keeping that with your kit. In case of emergency, don't take an elevator. Instead, take the stairs and go down the stairs slowly, one stair at a time. Hearing impairment. Make sure you keep a pad of paper and a pen in your emergency kit in case you need to write a note for somebody. And if you have a communi card, make sure you pack that in your emergency kit, including pre-printed phrases in case you need them. A communi card is a small printed card that identifies the bearer as hard of hearing. You can download and print it online. Vision impairment. Stock up on some extra tape and any assistive devices that you use daily, like an extra pair of glasses. And if you haven't already, now's your chance. Throw in a few more extra batteries. Medical devices and supplies. Keep extras of any medical devices or supplies that you need to last you for up to one week. My husband uses an oxygen tank, so we have an extra one right next to our emergency kit. And I've already packed a few extra cannulas. You may need to pack extras depending on your specific assistance needs. Ideally, you will have already packed those in your kit. And if you have a home support person, make sure you call them and plan for situations when they can't get to you. Support Network. Aim to be as self-sufficient as possible, but consider in your plan a network of family, friends, neighbors, and fellow residents who can help you. Some basics are to identify a buddy, set up a meeting point, gather contact information, share your kit information, and practice, practice, practice. Identify a buddy. Using the buddy system in your building or neighborhood can help ensure that you are both accounted for and safe during an evacuation. Set a meeting point. Deciding in advance on a meeting point with your support network provides peace of mind and any assistance needed when you meet. Don't forget an out-of-province contact. This is someone outside the province that you can call during an emergency to let them know that you're okay and where you're going to relocate. Be sure to share their contact information with family, friends and other contacts. Gather contact information from every member of your support network and set up a chain of communication to stay connected. Consider how your network can get in touch with you without power or phone service. On pages 37 and 38 of our Emergency Preparedness Guide, you can find helpful emergency contact information cards that you can keep in your wallet or purse. Share your kit information. 
tell your support network where your emergency kit and extra supports are. Your network should know what you can handle alone and what you need help with. Practice. Create drills and practice your plan with your support network for every emergency so that you can adapt to changing emergency scenarios. Phew, that's it. Now you know how to prepare. Time to get your documents in order. Step 4. Ready your important documents. Your documents are vital in an emergency. Ready copies of them now so medical professionals and your support network know what you need and can help you. Check our emergency guide for suggested documents to include. Consider medical papers such as prescriptions with dosage, lists such as allergies or your health history, cards like your medical insurance card or the names of any devices you need, including their style and serial numbers. Be sure to include in your documents contact information for local and out-of-province support, including phone numbers and addresses for the following. Family, friends, caregivers and doctors, neighbors, medical facilities or providers. Be sure to include any important documents your support animals or furry friends, like mittens, might need, such as vaccination records, veterinarian contact info, a recent photo, license, up-to-date identification. After you've copied all your vital documents, put them into a waterproof bag and tuck them into your emergency kit. Next up, the final step in your emergency plan. Step 5. Speak with your medical services provider. If you rely on any health services like these, dialysis, cancer treatments, oxygen treatments, medical life alert, social service, mental or behavioral health services. Check with a provider or your doctor to determine your care professional's emergency protocols. Find out if they can come to you or if there is somewhere else you can go to get the service you need. Document anything you need and include these in your plan. That's the last step. As a recap, to make sure you're prepared for an emergency more than scared, you'll want to know the risks, prepare a kit, make a plan, ready your documents, speak with your medical services provider. Following the steps and tips we've given you in this video should provide you with confidence in your emergency plan. To learn more about how you can prepare for an emergency, go to www.seniors-network.ca www.pitmeadows.ca forward slash emergency dash preparedness supported by the city of pit meadows the seniors networks emergency preparedness committee city of port coquitlam city of abbotsford ridge meadows senior society